Welcome. We're gonna work on getting this canopy sanded out. I I sanded a little bit on the on this side here. Um, I didn't want to didn't want to sand it all out and have you guys not see the process because it, it's really. I mean, Superfill is a wonderful product, and I'll show you how I do this. Or what my thoughts are behind it. We got four viewers now. I came on last night and smoothed it out with a little alcohol. And uh, we'll do this side here. I'll get the camera up here so you can see it. My thought is on this is I want a nice straight line on the sides, but I want a nice smooth blended in area on the windscreen. So I, I've started doing that. This is, this is basically done here on this side. Right, we'll switch to the other side, and I'll show you how I got achieved that effect. And that's only like two minutes work. So to keep from sanding into the sanding into the fuselage, we're just gonna put a little tape up there. I got to have this ready for Saturday if I'm going to paint it. Sandpaper. This is just a soft foam block. I want I want you to see how easy this stuff sands. Nice long stroke. I'm gonna blend that super fill into the canopy and still leave a pronounced line on the bottom. Now normally when I do these, I, I go ahead and and smooth them in, blend it. But this one here is going to be hard line because that's how the real airplane is. Superfill doesn't weigh much, <clears throat> and you're going to want to get as much off as you can anyway. So it weighs less. We'll get a weight on the airplane here tonight. See where we're at. Hope you guys have enjoyed this series. I've been, I've had fun building it for the last four months. We're gonna do the uh, Cobra series, the half a Cobras. Plus, I'll work on a full size Cobra. I got to get back to St. Louis and drop some of these airplanes off. I don't have any room here. I 
filled up this apartment. I think I need to move this paper. How long are contest lines for half a? I don't think there's a limit. I think uh, you can. I think they fly anywhere between uh, 35 foot and 52 foot, according to. According, let me read you this here. Half a pento. Okay, the secret to use uh, the secret to making a half a fly are simple. Use the right lines: eight thousandths diameter braided, forty-five to fifty-two foot long, from SIG or pylon. You have to make them yourself. Use compatible compatible engine and prop and tank system. Build an aerodynamically sound airplane. So forty-five to fifty-two foot. I think 52 foot would be uh, rather slow, but I don't know. I, you know how many years it's been since I've flown half A? <laughs> Other than going down to uh, Paducah and flying, flying that little uh, airplane that Lewis Rankin had down there. I mean. I, I don't fly halfway, but I'm gonna I'm going to just just for the fun of it. And I wanna I'm gonna tell you something that's not gonna make a whole lot of sense. When the guys are putting these in their car, you can take a halfway out and fly it because they fly great in the wind. We had a, a guy down at Mooter Park that had diesels. And when I was putting my Thunderbolts back in the car, he'd bring out his 15 diesel and, and fly. And it was, I think he died. I can't remember his name. He'd bring his wife to the park and she'd sit in the car and read a book. And he'd get out on the elf in the square pad and fly his 15 diesel. 30 foot for you. Well, I'm not, like I said, I'm not a aficionado on half A, but I'm going to be. We'll get, we'll get a half A going. Okay, so believe it or not, that looks pretty good. Now the, the panel lines in this windshield are eighth inch here between the panes and a quarter inch separating the windscreen and the panes. So I'm going to draw a black line in there, ink a black line. 30 for you. Oh, 30 years from flying. Yeah, okay. I bet it's been 45 years since since I flew half a for me. Ever since I, I mean, I flew half a's when I started. Everybody does. Uh, get a feel of it. Had little jumping beans and little Satans and Baby ringmasters and combat cats or combat kittens. But when I started flying 35s, I thought 35, wow, this is a huge motor. It's huge. 
It ain't nothing now. This is a 75, but I'll never, I will never go any bigger. Like Wendy had the 90s or whatever. Not, I'll pass on that. Too much weight. Basically, how we're going to make that canopy look like a real canopy. Yeah, I'm going to have to detail it back here. It's not, not quite finished back here. Please like, subscribe, and share, and super chat if you're so inclined, if these videos help you. I don't have super thanks available to me. Make sure to give that thumbs up. It lets uh, YouTube know I'm doing a, a good job and recommends my videos to other people to help the channel grow. Now this line here is going to be a difficult one. I can see this coming. But hard is okay. Impossible just takes a little longer. And I fixed the salt spreader today. The boss said, six hours in the salt spreader. Yeah, well, I had two hours in making a tool to take off the auger. Because we didn't have one, so I made the tool to do it. And I said that to him. I said, you know, difficult this takes a while, but the impossible just takes a little longer. <laughs> he just looked at me because it was a wreck. It was a piece of junk. But they wanted it fixed. Now, when I get to John's, I'll, I'll probably have to prime this and sand this a couple of times. Usually it takes about three primer sand outs. Thumbs up for me, Sparky. Looking good. Tom Luciano. Thank you, Tom. Wait till you see it in person. It, it'll be a... Uh, I don't know if you saw my 07 Thunderbolt, but this one will be just as nice. Just without the, the death pain on it. Can't put urethane on them anymore. They're just too heavy that way. It's not worth that extra that extra point for the front row with urethane. And I'm not going to do like Kenny Stevens and put a gallon of primer on my airplane. A gallon of clear, I mean. I wonder what this thing weighs. I wonder...
All right. That didn't take long to stand out. When I come home tomorrow, I might hit it with some primer and, and uh, sand it again. I can't do it tonight. It's dark and cold out. I think I'm going to sand that on that side too a little more. We'll bring that down to match the other side because this side here has about, I'd say it has about uh, 10 thousandths and this side here has about 30 thousandths. So I could sand that some more, make them even. Now we got to do this back line, which is going to be a real bitch. Yeah, a gallon only puts on three ounces, sure. I don't know who. <laughs> Yeah, you can fool some people some of the time, but not me. <laughs> Let me ask you this. How many coats of paint, how many coats can you put on an airplane with a gallon of paint? Every coat is one ounce period. And you can't sand it off because it's sinking down into the wood. And that's doing the light finish method. A gallon of paint, let's see. I get about uh, six, ounce, six ounces per quart, six or six coats per quart, six 12, that's 24, 24 coats of paint. So it probably adds about 12 ounces a gallon. And the guys that do urethane that say, Say it only adds an ounce. Every coat of urethane is three ounces. That's simple. I've and I've waited. I mean, as you guys know who have followed me, know that I weigh everything and keep track of what everything weighs. We're gonna have an issue here. I can see this coming. I'm going to have to green it. Yeah, I got that spot right there, too. Good evening, Marcel. Hello, 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 everybody. I'm thinking I'm going to paint the canopy frame red. Christmas, green, red. I don't know. I know I'll probably paint the front half red. That's what I'll do. Front half red, back half gray. Or silver. 
that probably be better silver to uh to mimic aluminum so we want a flat surface and then we don't have one I don't know this uh painting process is kind of a I do it on the fly. I look at it and go, well, what I think will look good there. You know, I, I start out with an idea, but the idea never. I used to draw a colored picture of my airplane. I quit doing that. I just used the airplane as the canvas. I can see what I what I want. This, uh, this canopy mold job is not the normal canopy mold job. So if you're looking to do a stunt ship, this is not how you do it. You mold it in. But I'm leaving the hard line, as I've stated several times, because I'm trying to simulate the Thunderbolt canopy. So if you're looking, if you're looking for how to install a canopy, if you look on my channel, Nobler, Monado, um atlas i i've done it several times where i mold the canopy in and basically it's the same as this only instead of holding it off with the tape you you feather this line into the use lodge That come out pretty good. Pretty good. Probably gonna take a little work around here tonight, tomorrow night, around the back with some green, I guess. Uh, we'll go to this camera. See, I'm, this right here is up about 30,000. Hey, Jim. Yellow canopy. Oh, yeah. The, um, the split line will be an in ink. I'll go around here with an ink so you can, it'll discern from the windscreen and the sliding canopy. And I'll probably do this in red, the front half in red, and the back half in silver. I don't know. I gotta. I kind of got to go, well, that looks about right. <laughs> so we'll see what happens. It's 
but I'm up about 30 thousandths here and I want to take 20 off kind of got a lump right there so we'll we'll sand on her with the uh, with this bumping the camera how's your paint job coming out jim is it as light as uh i said Cannot beat my training system for weight. No way. I'm sanding into the plastic is what I'm doing now. plastic edge off of it. Oh yeah, that feels much better. Now, Jim here, the guy who's uh, Joanne Lynch, that's Mama Joe, his wife, he's a 80-year-old builder, supreme craftsman. He's tried my finishing techniques, and uh, from what I understand, they're working for him. So you're never too old to learn. Not to say that I know everything, because I don't. But those people who think they know everything are particularly aggravating those of us who do. <laughs> I just learned from, from old world guys. I mean, guys that were top of the line finishers. My problem is when I get to this stage is I get excited. And uh, I tend to hurry things. But on this airplane, I don't I don't have to hurry because I got months and months and months. I don't remember when I built my 07 Thunderbolt. I think it was 05. I had three months just in the paint job on that airplane. So get around here and sand on it in a different position Put some green stuff on here. I 
make that edge line real nice. I got that down. I took 20 thousandths off there anyway. Even it up. So in 31 minutes, I sanded it out. Painted the white today. On target, like you said. Final coat this weekend. When you shade your hair line with chalk it, it will 3D the canopy frame. Nice effect. I'll call you and 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 get the uh, the rundown on how to do that because I've never never done the chalk effect, but we'll see what happens. There's about a ten thousandths uh, ridge there now. This is smooth, like it should be. And then starting right there where the canopy slides, about 10,000. Back here, it's a little more. But that's just the nature of the beast. It'll be fine. We'll, uh, we'll smooth some green stuff on now. Like this. This is a. Uh, this back half is going to need a little more work. That's all right. This side here is a little too proud. It's about, I'd say at least 50 thousandths on that corner. So I got to knock some of the plastic off. Let's wipe it off and see what it looks like. Yeah, that um, tinting your clear. Well, first off, material selection. I only use Randolph dope now. I used to use Aerogloss. Aerogloss was the best, but you can't get it. So the second best product is randolph the difference between randolph and brodac even though they're made by the same company is like night and day there's twice as much pigment in randolph as there is in brodac if you are going to paint your airplane white with brodac by two quarts and you'll use it all and then maybe it won't even get covered but if you're going to use a randolph you can use a half a pint and you probably won't use all that so there is a difference in material but the tinted clear from the wood up bringing your airplane closer to the color that you want from the very beginning i can't i can't explain to you how much weight it saves because by the time you're ready to paint your first coat of base color on it's just well you saw you know how much paint that I used to paint this gray and it's completely covered but when you hold it up to the Sun you can see through the wings and or see light through them. you can't see through them but you guys know what I mean that uh, that will save you a ton of weight Okay, I need to figure out how to do this back part here. Can't really grind on that. My job with this channel is to help you build a better model.
So I'm going to put a blue tape on this line and then come back with yellow because I can't go around the top as smooth as I want to go around the top. But you can with the plastic tape. Now we got a void here. I'm just going to go ahead and hit that with green because I don't want to wait overnight to, uh, to sand. But by God, don't do that very often. <laughs> You'll be sorry. I'll probably be sorry anyway. Good. Yeah, it looks pretty good. Alexander, you live in Scotland, don't you? But you're the bagpipe player. Which I know nothing about. I can play the radio. I play it loud, too. Matter of fact, they get mad at me at work. Because <laughs> I can't hear them. Ever since that welding accident, I don't hear nothing. I had a spark go down my ear and burn a hole right through my eardrum. Don't play the fights. Oh, I can't play nothing. I'm feeling this here to see the symmetry, and they, it feels pretty good. It's a little high right here. But if you take your fingers and pull it along, it should, it should feel the same. You, your fingers can feel better than you can see. Like I say, it's a little high right there. We'll, we'll uh, get the polywog and sand that out. Polywog, where'd you go? Right here. I mean, it wasn't much. It probably was only a couple of thousands. Nonetheless, if I can feel it, you'll be able to see it. You can spend hours getting this ready to go. 
goes in a high spot right there. just not going to give up on me give it up you can't win remember difficult is, is uh, hard it takes a while but the impossible just takes a little longer symmetrical now let me spot right there okay let's add a little green And about three ounces to my airplane right here. <laughs> It'll all sand off though. Won't be able to sand this for a while. But that'll hide any of this imperfections. Hey. Forty six minutes in. Oh, 
Hard to believe what you can get done in an hour a day if you just do it, Danny. We'll leave the back one on. Yeah, I better take it off. Otherwise, it'll break. Break off. I'll take the back masking tape off. And leave it. Nope. It's going to all come off. Okay. Perfect. Perfect. Clean that line right up. Now when it dries, I'll sand that out with 320, 600, shoot the primer on it. And we'll be ready to go. So for the last 13 minutes, I guess I'll revert back to my favorite thing, which is some more sanding. <laughs> Okay. Now we need to see what it weighs. What do you guys figure it weighs? It's, uh, it's coming up, I can tell you that. got everything in it ready to fly tank motor pipe all the hardware I'm gonna be so disappointed if I don't make my 64 ounces But I got to tell you this, most guys at the Nets, they lie about their weight of their airplanes. How much does it weigh? 58, put it on the scale. How much does it weigh? 72. <laughs> okay, let's see where we're at. I better write it down so I know where I'm at. As far as clearing things go, where's my scale? Probably hiding. Got the green tape, that's good. That. Oh, be darn, it disappeared. There it is. Any closer to biting? Okay, guys, put your guess 61, huh? I hope so. I doubt it. It's 62. So I got two ounces that I can play with. Ain't gonna make it. So we'll try to keep it as light as possible. Of 
course, I don't know, 62, and I'm going to change the tank out, maybe 61. Let's, let's play with that, change the tank out, see if it still balances with the lighter prop hook. Yeah, I might still make it. It might be down in the 60, 60, you know, 60 ounce range right now with the other hardware, with the, with the, uh, now it's got to get one more coat of paint, be three quarters of an ounce more in paint, plus clear. So I'm going to write that down. So it's the same weight as my high roller right now, but it's finished. The Tucker is 61. The Continental behind me is 60. The Junar is 58. So I got to figure out if I can change the tank out and a smaller and a smaller spinner nut if it'll still balance. I can I can bring it down. I can bring it down uh, probably an ounce and a half. Well, let's weigh this thing. This is a six. Maybe I have an eight. I do. I have an eight right here. Okay, we're gonna go from that tank. To this tank. So, where's the scale? I just had the damn thing there again. This is two six. Two point six is probably. Uh, Two tenths in packing, so we'll see 2.3, 2.3 ounces on that. And this tank here is 1.45, 3, 2, that's 5. And we're going to make this 1, 12, 8. It's, um, 0.85 ounces lighter, so 0.85, and that spinner that I got on there is an ounce. I'm going to cut half the weight out, so 0.85 and 0.5, it's 5, 5, 5 is 1.35. I can take 1.35 ounces off the nose up front but I'm going to add that on and paint will it balance <laughs> that's the only problem and the worst thing you can do the worst thing you can do is to put concentrated lead to balance something so If I had a choice of spreading it out over the tank and the spinner and everything just to get it to balance, I would rather do that than make it light and put a chunk of lead in the nose. That would be a killer. There's no place to take anything off the back, so I'm kind of stuck there. I'm just going to have to go super light on the clear. And use, uh, and use a lot of grease to make it shine.
That's elbow grease for you guys. <laughs> there is no way that I would grind on a PA-75. I don't care if there was a way to get it off. There is no way. <clears throat> I used to have a magnesium head, a magnesium back plate, and a magnesium drive nut for, for them, and it took about three quarters of an ounce off the motor. But the motor doesn't run as good with the mag head on it. The heat transfer, the characteristics are not the same. So I'll run it as designed. And I mean, it's, it's bare minimal, you know, bare minimum anyway. The, the problem why this, this airplane came up in weight because it's, that big around it's huge it's that big around so there's a lot of material spread out over a lot of distance and this wasn't my best wood this was like third choice so we did pretty good i think i think if i had two pound wood or three pound wood i could make it a little lighter but i don't know It'll be a nice airplane. That, that's all I, you know, I'll tell you that right now. It'll be nice. This won't be as light as I would like. Maybe I won't enjoy it as much flying it. I don't know. I'd sure like to get one down in the 53 ounce mark like Billy's got, but ain't happening. No. No. I haven't built I haven't built a Viper in a long time. I may build another one of those after I get this uh Cobra project done. We're gonna be building two half A Cobras and one full size Cobra after this airplane here. So We'll see what happens, but I might build a Viper, the original Viper with the beam wing. Yeah, fill it with helium. That'd be good. Can't make it no lighter. I mean, it's got no paint on it. It's got no wood in it. Got no glue in it. I don't know what to tell you. It's got to be something. All right, guys. I really appreciate you watching. Make sure to like and subscribe. Become a member if you can. Helps the channel. Let's me know that you guys appreciate it. And uh, we'll see you tomorrow night for a little while. And then Charles will come on. And then Saturday at John's coming up. And this will get painted. It's final coat. And maybe I'll even get a coat of clear on it so I can go ahead and start inking. All right. We'll see you then, fair winds, tight lines, and the word of the evening is, let's go Brandon. See ya.